welcome back to another episode of the Open Source Cafe. Really excited for this one because today we are joined by a special guest, uh, Priyanka. Priyanka, uh, first of all, thanks a lot for joining and uh, super excited to have you on the show and learn more about from your experiences and how folks can get involved in the CNCF. But before we get started, would you like to tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself? Sure thing. Thank you so much for having me, Kunal. I am thrilled to be here. Hello, everybody. As Kunal said, I am Priyanka Sharma, and I'm the executive director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, to tell you a little bit about myself, I have uh, been in uh, tech forever and uh, involved with Cloud Native since its inception about six years ago, first as a contributor to a project known as Open Tracing, which then merged to become Open Telemetry. Uh, then as a board member, when I worked at GitLab, uh, I represented Silver members on the CNCF board, and then finally in this role. I have loved my time in the open source and specifically cloud native community. This is a world where not only do you do great things and learn about really complex esoteric systems that really run the world, but you also make lifelong friends and are in a supportive, inclusive environment. So that's my love affair with cloud native. It's ongoing and long lasting. Uh, when I am not working or thinking cloud native stuff, I live in San Francisco and I spend a lot of time with my dog, Ollie, uh, who takes a, who it takes a lot of attention uh, and just enjoying the city. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, thanks. Uh, thanks again. Once, once again for joining in and about this session. Mm -hmm. um, we've been sharing in the CNCF students community a lot about the initiatives, how to get involved so many LFX mentorship programs and uh, so many events and KubeCon and so, so on and so forth. So before we move any forward, all the links uh, can be found in the description below. Um, this is not just for students, it's for anyone who is a, who is just getting started. So you can get started at you know any age, it's an inclusive community, even the mentorship programs that CNCF has, they're not just for students, it's like open to everyone, even working professionals who are just getting started uh, take part in it. But in this session, we're got to like dive into um, what is CNCF and uh, what is the purpose and stuff and uh, some of the ways by which you can get involved. So someone who may not have heard about the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, Priyanka, can you give a brief overview about what is the mission of CNCF and like what is CNCF? Why, why is there a CNCF organization? Absolutely. So the mission of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is to make cloud native ubiquitous, <laughs> which is a little bit tautological, right? You're like, well, cloud native is making cloud native ubiquitous. What does that even really mean? What that means is um, there's a lot in the history of computing that we have been innovating for a long time, right? And uh, I think the big thing happened when you you know for you went from physical service for everybody to like virtual machines. Uh, then you uh, had like the PaaS systems like Heroku come along. Uh, over time, there was innovation and containers were born. Docker made them mainstream, and suddenly people were thinking about. Uh, infrastructure for software in a very different way. Um, and it was enabling them to do things they had not done before, which was really break apart pieces of a large system and treat it in isolation, whether it is, you know, hey, this is there's a lot of traffic that goes to the section or, oh, there is a bug that's isolated here or however you may want to think about it. And that gave birth to the concept of microservices, or which is, you know, just small scoped things that are running independent, loosely coupled with uh, to create a system. So when all that happened, uh, there was a project by Google called, some may have heard of it, called Kubernetes. Uh, and it's a container orchestration system, which means if, if you have, let's say, Docker containers or any kind of containers, really, you can leverage a system like Kubernetes to manage them. And there is a lot of management that needs to go on when it's a large scale system with lots of traffic. When it's just, you know, Priyanka's app.com with my mom and myself as the visitors, it's not so terrible. But when something really blows up and is like, you know, a New York Times or a Tesla or, you know, or a Netflix, those kinds of um, com companies and uh, software systems just need a lot of uh, management to utilize compute resources successfully and be responsive to their customers and users needs. So 
cloud native is really the philosophy of uh, building these loosely coupled systems so that they are self-healing, resilient, so you ship fast and reliably. Um, and a lot of it rests on this key open source project called Kubernetes, but really there's a constellation of projects around it that support the overall, overall way of working which would be called cloud native. So we have today over 122 projects. We, um, when you, and ultimately when you think of this cloud native way of working, it is very closely tied to the DevOps movement where an engineer under, le learns and understands about more than shipping the code, but also about running that code, securing that code and managing that code successfully. So that's cloud native in a not very short luck nutshell, but hopefully that gets the point across. Thanks a lot for sharing Priyanka. And you mentioned like, you know, how it was like for servers racks and then VMs came into picture and all this history as well. But uh, you, you mentioned about projects. So Kate's uh, Kubernetes was uh, donated to the CNCF by Google, I think, correct. 2014. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah. when we talk about projects in, in CNCF, there's like for someone who is new, they may not know about like sandbox and graduated mm -hmm. projects and incubating projects. But even before that, some folks may have this question like, why are these you know like companies or whatever giving away their projects to CNCF? What is the benefit? Sure. So I will tackle your first question about as your second question about what's why are companies giving away projects and then I'll share the like different tiers and all that. So ultimate at its very core, CNCF is an industry consortium organization, which means in, we bring folks together who are competitors sometimes to collaborate on open source projects that benefit them all and therefore benefit the end user customers of all of these people. So that is at the heart of cloud native and it drives very much from Kubernetes, which is cloud agnostic. It helps you run containers anywhere and including bare metal. So um, it was our, it was in our core DNA to be thinking from an industry collaboration perspective. And the way things worked out with CNCF, where we were able to bring all the major cloud providers to the table to collaborate on this project, where we were able to get them to all donate resources to work on it, um, has created a different kind of paradigm, which end users trust a lot more. End users is anyone who uh, consumes uh, cloud native technologies or services and doesn't doesn't sell them in any way. Um, so, and the flip side of that is vendors, the so people who are selling products and services in cloud, so cloud native. So end users have come to value the cloud CNCF mark of approval because they know a project that an open source project that is hosted here is going to have the backing of multiple companies. So you are not locked in with one company's Change, and like maybe that company changes strategy. Maybe somebody wants to, you know, do something else. But the project's not going to die just because one entity changed their mind. I think there's also, you know, the power of the collective that comes in. I mean, there are, as you know, there are hundreds of thousands of developers and developers around the world who contribute to cloud native projects, right? And all these people get involved when you're bringing a project into cloud native, into CNCF. Um, so there are these like strategic advantages for a company to bring a project in. Of course, that means that you lose a little bit of control, right? Uh, but ultimately, I think what we have successfully done as a foundation is supported these projects in marketing themselves, in putting themselves out there through our flagship events like KubeCon Cloud NativeCon, through content, through PR, all sorts of things. So. CNCF is able to bring multiple parties at the table and users want projects that are vendor neutral and cloud native. And finally, you bring all this community to collaborate when you're uh, working with CNCF and you get to market, mark, you get a marketing engine that you wouldn't have by yourself. So all these benefits have really helped companies do something that's good for the ecosystem and donate projects. Um, go ahead, sorry. No, that was uh, you know very well explained. And speaking of projects, before you move on to the next the, the next question that I asked, uh, the CNCF landscape you can check that out. Uh, it's huge. Don't be <laughs> overwhelmed. Uh, and uh, just a little bit of a plug there. Uh, 
I'll be speaking at like KubeCon with uh, an amazing panel about navigating the landscape. And I mean, there's a talk by Matty uh, as well uh, about uh, not like the navigation part, but like uh, making the most out of as a contributor. So check it out. And uh, the scholarship link is in the description below. Yay, that's awesome. I'm glad you're doing this session on the landscape. You know, the landscape is, you know, it's why you either love it or you hate it, but you always feel something. <laughs> it's very, uh, people, it, it, it evokes strong feelings. And I think the reason for that is it's so vast, right? And so some people are like, well, why is it so big? And uh, that's not a good sign. But if you look at a lot of other industries out there that the ad industry, for example, has landscapes. And you look at them and they're just as crazy, if not crazier than ours. And it's seen as a good sign because it shows how thriving that ecosystem is, how much innovation that is happening over there. So I personally think the landscape's awesome. I do think it's sometimes hard to navigate sessions like yours, um, the content that the uh, I think business value committee is putting together mm -hmm. or, or maybe it's cartographers group. I'm sorry if I misattribute to uh, uh, get, have explainers in the landscape itself that help you guide, get a guide through mm -hmm. it. All those are works that are hopefully going to make it more useful. for people. Yeah. What, what, what would, you know, what also makes sense is starting with the problem, not looking at like the landscape as a whole. You have an app, you want to, you know, deploy yeah. it first, you containerize it, then you look at monitoring solutions. And then have, the landscape has categorized this in a really nice way. Um, so make sure you check that out. But yeah, let's move forward with like the three tiers yeah. of the projects. Yeah. One uh, thing that Kunal, you're exactly right, that that's how the landscape should be used. And I think that's how the savvy folks are using it because what I can tell you, the landscape is the top referring link for a lot of logos on that chart out there. So the right people find the right technologies through it being really valuable to the people who are providing those technologies. Um, now I will talk about, as you requested, the various levels of the projects. So uh, at this point, as I said, we have over 122 projects. That's a lot of them, right? Um, but that doesn't mean we are really nearly recommending all of them. Instead, um, CNCF came up with this concept of uh, levels. And it starts with, uh, well, it's the lowest level is the sandbox projects. These projects are uh, cool concepts that have, uh, that have real value to the cloud native ecosystem. And they are, um, and they are able to um, you know, show, like come into CNCF in a very easy manner. Like it's a very easy process. You know, the committee looks at applications all together. There's a quick vote, you yay or nay. And projects are either in or not. And uh, those projects then get this neutral IP zone within CNCF to collaborate, attract more um, people to contribute and build the buzz to ultimately go up the levels. Uh, the next level would be the incubating projects. These are projects that are starting to demonstrate that they have adoption by end users. They're starting to demonstrate that more than one company is contributing to them. They're starting to show they have a good governance model. They're thinking about the security of the project, th things like that. Um, and that's the second tier. And then there's the top level, which is the graduated projects. These projects are our most, uh, I would say, stress-tested, most reliable, most the ones that we are saying at CNCF that, hey, end users, you should feel free to use this in your production system and go live. Um, and so those projects, have they go through security audits regularly. They have a guaranteed uh, vendor neutral governance. They have... Um, they have a diverse community. They are doing testing. They're they're much they're they're basically mature operations, and Kubernetes is obviously one of them. And then there are others like uh, Fluentd is another graduated project. Envoy Proxy is another graduated project. We have all kinds of really awesome technologies that support the overall vision and mission of cloud native. So those are the three tiers. And just uh, as it's super easy to get into Sandbox, it's it's part. One path is to, you know, apply to keep, you know, as you keep progressing, you apply to incubate, then you go to graduation status application.
The other is you can directly come in as an incubating project too, but the bar is much higher. The Technical Oversight Committee of the CNCF is a group of uh, highly respected technical volunteers, and they uh, do, do a lot of due diligence and conversations for projects before they're going to uh, accept them as an incubated one. Uh, so I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to ask about the committee. Uh, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, about what you mentioned and what you were talking about previously, then it also maintains a a, a good standard, right, for when it comes to projects uh, for the end users that we were talking about previously. Essential, like that is mm. that is the whole point of the uh, process and of the technical oversight committee existing because we are looking for tastemakers of technology literally. People who have seen distributed systems, whether in large-scale vendors or in large-scale end users, uh, unique deployments, who, who've, been, who've been around the block and who can really attest to the value of a certain technology and its maturity. Amazing. Thanks a lot for sharing, Priyanka. And I believe that gave you a good, uh, good oversight about the CNCF and how it functions and the projects part. As always, you know, everything is available on like the website. You can explore more about it. But now let's uh, move into like some action items. So uh, what are some of, let's say, the initiatives run by CNCF and how folks can take part, starting with like, let's say, the events. Yeah. Sure. Yes. So, you know, events are a very key way for communities to collaborate and come together, especially when you look at open source communities where people work for different companies. These events are the best way for people to come and talk about these technologies, get involved, start working together. Um, and so that's why we in CNCF invest a lot in our events uh, operation. So our flagship are the KubeCon Cloud Native Cons. You see my background, which shows our upcoming event, which is KubeCon Cloud Native Con Valencia in Europe. Uh, it's going to happen May 15th through 20th. Uh, and uh, But it's also going to happen uh, in North America uh, in um, end of October in Detroit. Um, and in most years, we try our best to host one in China as well. This year is a little tricky, of course, as you might know. Um, so these events, by the way, are the largest open source conferences in the world. They are some of the most fun times that I have ever had. We have a very high bar for the speakers who are accepted. Every talk must be vendor neutral unless it's very clearly marked as a sponsor keynote. And even then, actually, it's highly expected that you're going to be like educating people from in a technical perspective. Um, the events are just <laughs> that's how I got really excited about this community because I had such a good time and everyone was so welcoming and friendly. Um, so those are our top events. But that's not all. In addition to that, we host a lot of project specific events like on Voicon, PromCon for Prometheus, et cetera. And sometimes they are co-located with KubeCons and sometimes they're standalone. For example, Argo project is doing ArgoCon that's on its, like, uh, on its, uh, its own timeline. Um, we also run the uh, support, or I should say, uh, community run events called Kubernetes Community Days. These have really blossomed in the last couple of years, last year, I would say, where individuals like you, me, anybody, we could create an event in a geo that is where we are based and locally get co-organizers, co sponsors, and organize something that meets our guidelines in terms and conditions and get support from our events team, but is community owned and operated, uh, community run and operated. And so those have been really popular. We've hosted like six out of seven continents are covered. Antarctica is the only one lagging behind. I wonder why. <laughs> but we've had like, a, we've had a bunch of them in India. We've had a bunch in the US, in Africa, um, Europe, of course. So these are different kinds of events that we do. And I'm sure there are ones that we do that I'm not even like remembering right now, like all kinds of meetups, all kinds of community groups. And the whole idea is find ways to bring people together, have fun and collaborate. Amazing. And thanks for mentioning like the KCDs as well, because if you may not be able to attend KubeCon for any reason, I mean, it's a huge conference. We'll talk more about how CNCF uh, makes it more exclusive for people, uh, more inclusive for people who may want to attend. Um, but yeah, speaking of KCDs, uh, most of my viewers are from India. So KCD Bangalore event is coming up mm -hmm. uh, on 23rd. It's a virtual event. You can check it out. 
Yeah. But speaking of inclusive, uh, you know, inclusiveness at CNCF, what are some of the ways in which uh, folks who may not be able to attend, how CNCF supports them? Absolutely. So I think um, COVID, while it's been horrible for everyone, has been really helpful in pushing our inclusivity. So today, all events that are happening in person will have a virtual component, and that includes the KubeCon Cloud Native Cons. And so if you can't show up in person, you can easily just use your browser to attend. There are multi and uh, the, the, it's, it's a ticketed event, but you can apply for a scholarship. You can uh, attend it. And if anyone has any needs, uh, they will be able to come in for, for free. We, the key is to let as many folks in as we can and help in, as many as we can. Um, so that's a big way we do inclusivity. But scholarships on their own are, I think, a big way to increase, uh, include, uh, in, include, increase, wow, what's wrong with it? <laughs> increase our diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, we have both need-based and DEI scholarships. So that covers socioeconomic needs as well as underrepresented minority needs. Um, and we try to give out as many scholarships as we can. We named them uh, the Dan Kahn Scholarship Fund because um, the previous executive director, Dan Kahn, the, the, he used to be the biggest champion of diversity that I've ever met. Um, and this scholarship has benefited hundreds of people at this point. We also, sorry if I may add in, take in, uh, accessibility quite seriously. And so you will see uh, there's live captioning of a lot of talks. You will see there is um, easy access for anyone who may be differently abled. So we try to think of every which way, but we may not always get everything in. And that's where we tell the community that please reach out. You can do it in any form that's comfortable to you. Let us know if we missed something that would help you feel more comfortable, more able to attend, and we will do our best to accommodate your needs. I love that. And it's not just for CNCF. If you're running your own community as well, it's the needs that are met and needs that are not met. Uh, the ones that are not met, just be uh, you know, straight up ask them, like, uh, you know, we would try to make it uh, happen, like, in the next event, what is your feedback? Mm -hmm. So collecting feedback is extremely, extremely important. We'll talk more about, like, case studies uh, shortly. But uh, there's one thing I wanted to mention. Yeah, I, 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 got, I got to, I got, I was a diversity scholarship uh, recipient in, like, 2019. One thing I want to mention, uh, since, you know, a lot of students would be applying. Oh, by the way, um, as of right now, uh, more than 2,000 folks have already applied. Um, so if you are a student, you want to attend virtually, the link is in the description below. You can uh, you know, feel free to apply. But what you may be wondering is, and I'd love to hear Priyanka's thoughts on this as well, like folks who are just getting started out, they may not know much and they may feel like, what do I have to offer to the conference? Um, even though now we have the student track and the uh, one-on-one -on -one tracks, how would you combat this feeling, uh, Priyanka? What, what, what would your message be to them? So my message is, there's always going to be a first time, right? And that was true for me in the first KubeCon I attended in Seattle. And it was, I was very, very nervous because I was like, I'm going into this event where there are the giants, uh, intellectual giants of systems are going to be there. And I like just got into the space. What do I know? And while that's all true, the best thing about the KubeCon Cloud Native Cons is that you walk in, and so many people of different levels of experience and knowledge just pull you in. They're like, when I first went in, people were like, hey, how are you? Tell us more about why you're here. And you just have, everyone's so kind that you. I felt at ease very quickly. And I've heard this experience repeated by other people as well. So I have confidence in our community that they will make sure to welcome you when you come in for a first time. So that's on the human level. Then on a technologies level, as Kunal mentioned, right, we have the students track that is designed just for you. And that's a great one to start with. And the 101 track is also excellent. One more track that I would recommend is the business value track. That is a new one that we incorporated, which has been doing really well because the business value track is about, okay, we have all these cool technologies. How do they connect to the outcomes that a company may care about, whether it is better better customer experience, whether it is uh, financial results, whether it is building a community, whatever it might be. And so those sessions, in my opinion, paint a full picture to really 
understand the value and importance of cloud native. So I would say those tracks are essential. And then I think it's really important to participate in the most famous of all, the hallway track, which is when you're between sessions, just go up to people, start talking to them. Even the, you know, this is the crazy part. This is the one conference where even the sponsor showcase booth is super fun and useful. Just hang out over there. You'll get lots of cool swag and people will talk to you and immerse yourself. I think it's also good in that in that uh, sponsor showcase to go to the maintainer, uh, the project, project booths. That's where you can learn directly about technologies and the whole job of that booth is to, the person at the booth is to talk to you, help you understand their project, maybe entice you to come contribute. So you'll get the attention you need and people will explain things to you and help you come on board. Couldn't agree more. And a little bit of a spoiler for like the next point about how to get involved. Prinka mentioned about open source. So CNCF takes part in LFX mentorship, Google Summer of Code, Outreach, so many. The, just go to CNCF uh, slash, uh, uh, I think, mentor, mentorship or something on GitHub and you'll find it over there. But, uh, um, but th this this point about like uh, when you engage with someone, they'll be able to help you out. The sponsor showcase, it's, it's like a really big hall and there's so many uh, stalls where you can talk to people. And there's also a, a job board where folks can like write stuff down. So since this session is focused around folks who are getting started, you may be looking for like internships or opportunities to contribute to open source. And this is great for that. Being one of the largest events in the world, it also has a very strict like code of conduct. So uh, definitely no one will you know say anything bad to you or like shoo you away if you're a beginner. Everyone is very supportive and welcoming. And um, they, they, that's what they want as well. I mean, after 20 years, who is going to maintain Kubernetes? You. <laughs> so, so they want they want new folks to contribute as well. Um, more than you know. Cool. Absolutely. I think that code of conduct is a really key point that you brought up, Kunal. Um, I think, you know, this is especially important because the world has been in such a weird place the last two years that coming out of our woodwork, right? And meeting new people and all of that, it can be a bit more stressful than it was maybe before. And so people should be empowered that if you experience behavior that made you uncomfortable in any way, that you can talk about it, you can report it. And it's not going to become some crazy drama. It's not going to take over. You know, we will just do our best to help you address the situation. So many times, you know, somebody somebody just said, if somebody said something, they, they themselves were unaware of what, you know, what the consequence of that statement might be. And what I have found is that whenever someone has called that out, most people are immediately rectifying the situation. And ultimately that creates a better environment for those two people to interact again, for the overall ecosystem to be better. And it's also, I think, an important thing to keep in mind that you yourself should strive to your very best behavior because you're in a community where we want to have a high amount of trust, where this code of conduct is therefore taken very seriously. So bring your best self and make sure you support others as well as your own plans. Most definitely. And uh, speaking of initiatives, one more thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, the resources part. So CNCF has a lot of certifications that can help folks, courses, I believe, as well. And uh, the, the KCNA one, which is great for beginners, make sure you check that one out as well. And also the case studies. Um, so maybe we can talk a little bit more about that. I was just reading the one about Spotify, mm -hmm. how they're like uh, moving to kids from their uh, own orchestration. So yeah, about these resources, if you can share and how folks can uh, utilize these. Absolutely. Um, I would say that, yes, Kunal, you're absolutely right. There's so many things. The challenge is usually what's the order in which you utilize resources. I would say the case studies are ex excellent in that they will provide you the real world reasons why cloud native exists, why it's useful to these various organizations for-profit and non-profit ones. So people should check those out to get a lay of the land. And I think, and think about it, those, those case studies by these people means they are employing cloud native technologists. So they could be future employers for you. So that's what I would use the case studies for. I think once you've understood that a little bit, I would shift focus to uh, looking at what, cloud native is huge at this point, right? There's over 122 projects. 
what are the key, what are the technologies that are feeling attractive to you? Kubernetes is great, but it's not the only one out there, right? And it's also like you may have a preference in, oh, I like early stuff versus, or I like super mature stuff. So sandbox to uh, graduation, like there's a um, spectrum that you can choose from. So I think it's important to um, do some just look around in the community, see which one you're vibing with and you're enjoying, you care, you like, you're connecting with the tech as well. And then I think the mentorships and internships are a great opportunity because uh, first of all, let me tell you, we want to double the one, the amount of mentorships that we gave out money for this year. So I need y'all to apply so I can give money out. So please just do it. Um, but so there's- They'll do it. <laughs> but they'll do it because the, the 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 LFX mentorship it started with seven folks, then it was like something like fourteen, then it was twenty, and then now it was like something like seventy seven. So yes. huge exponential growth. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and trying to double it this year. So only you can help me do that. So that's number one, and also it's just going to be amazing to work with people who are professionals. They can become lifelong mentors. They can help you lead to full time jobs. Um, so it's very rich experience and there's all kinds of stuff you can do by the way you can there's also like tech doc technical documentation there's uh, core technology there's all kinds of stuff so check that out and apply uh, apply liberally apply to a lot of places and see where you get in um and then i would say in order to really get like the final stamp of approval so to speak it's really helpful to do the certifications uh, as kunal said the kcna is a great starting point it's for people who are completely new to cloud native tech i would argue that it's helpful to do that before you even do a mentorship you don't need to wait for a mentorship to do that one in fact it'll prepare you to apply for a mentorship and the others, uh, which is uh, CKA, Certified Kubernetes Admin, and CKD, uh, AD, which is Certified Kubernetes Application Developer. Uh, and lately, we have Certified Kubernetes Security Specialist. This is a good suite of certs to do to become really attractive to employers because then it's like, okay, they definitely know this, this aspects of the technology. And by the way, I just mentioned the certs that are our biggest and most most popular. There's a lot of, uh, there's lots of new stuff coming out, first of all, and there's lots of courses, etc. for all, for many of the other projects. So it's not all Kubernetes. So check out our course and certification catalog. And I would say, so in, in to, to, to order this, first case studies, second KCNA, third, start exploring various projects and thinking about what internships to apply to, mentorships. And you can choose to parallel process or one before the other, the other sorts and a mentorship. So that's the path I would go down. Awesome, a complete uh, roadmap here. And I, I would also like to give a huge shout out to all the, the CN, there's so many content creators who are CNC ambassadors creating content around DevOps and stuff. So check out their, uh, check out their channels as well. They're doing some amazing work. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk about, and we're almost like at the end of the session was, um, so we, we mentioned how to get involved. So there's just to wrap up, uh, KubeCon, internship programs, community groups, open source, which can be, by the way, like code and no code contributions. Yeah. I did a session with Divya and Savita on no code contributions to Kubernetes. You all can watch that one to learn more about that. And we talked about how CNCM can offer uh, can can help you and offer support like the events part and scholarships and certifications and the landscape and uh, so many other things. Cool. Uh, just uh, just as a closing uh, discussion, Priyanka, uh, maybe we can wrap up with like uh, uh, why is it important for more young people to let's say get involved in the community and how CNCF can can help them in their career. Absolutely. I think Kunal, you said it better than anything I will say. Who's going to maintain Kubernetes in twenty years? The young people. <laughs> so that is, you know, they, you all are the future and uh, near future, I might even add. And so that's why we want you involved from the get go. I think cloud native is going to be one of the more like, you know, um, event, the cloud native, the rise of cloud native is going to be sustained over a long time. And it's going to be essential. Okay, it's going to go the path Linux went. Linux, like no one's forgotten about Linux. It's been 30 years, right? And that's the path we expect cloud native to take. We need technologists in every generation, in every cohort to be 
familiar expert in these technologies because it's become the building block of all innovation. So that's why it's never going to go out of style. You're always going to be employable. And it's a pretty nice community where things are fun. So that's why I think people should join in in hordes and droves and find their space here. And I think they will be rewarded in many different ways. Oh, I agree completely. And uh, with newer, newer tools coming out and, uh, you know, when, when folks say that, uh, you know, uh, this new thing is coming out and this will become obsolete and we won't be having uh, jobs or whatever. I think it in turn just creates more jobs. So yeah. when Kubernetes came out and folks were like, okay, now we don't need these admins or whatever. That's not Kate's created so many roles. Exactly. Um, so I think even in the future, if something else comes up, um, I think they'll just create, you know, new, newer opportunities and more exciting times. It's all building. Um, it's all building yeah. it's Legos. And it's, you know, I think of technologists, you know how doctors, they have to keep their knowledge up to date every few years. They have to keep taking exams, keep learning. We're the same way. Instead yeah. of human system, we're looking at a software system. That's the only difference. <laughs> doctors of cloud native. <laughs> I should. <laughs> we should make something around that. I mean, let me write it in my to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks, Priyanka, for joining. This was great. Um, and uh, for everyone else, if you want to learn more about CNCF and uh, everything else we discussed, you want to get, get a taste of it, um, check out the link in the description below. You can attend KubeCon um, virtually for free. As a student, all you need to do is sign up via the form below. And yeah, um, this hybrid uh, approach to events is amazing. Uh, more and more people can participate. So yeah, do apply and uh, we will see you there. And the agenda is also live for the schedule. Yes. So you can build your own schedule and check out the talks you want to attend. By the way, all talks are also uploaded on YouTube. If you miss out on something, you can watch it later. And in the spirit of hybrid events, I'm going to be hosting my usual happy hour on Zoom uh, at KubeCon EU as well. So which means if y'all are interested, want to hang out with me, just join in and we'll have a conversation and make new friends. So I hope to see at least some of you there. Everyone should come to KubeCon. Nice. Awesome. And uh, everything we discussed and Priyanka, the office hours and everything, um, you can check out on the website and everything I'll leave in the description below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.